Good morning class. Today I am going to do chapter number 7 control and coordination. This is part 1. Yes my dear class. Today we are going to learn control and coordination in humans. How we control things. How we coordinate things. Let us see now. Human body as we know it is a complex performing machine. It is a complex machine which performs tons of functions, millions of functions and it processes to maintain why? What? to maintain and sustain life. So without brain, human cannot survive. Human cannot exist. He cannot control and coordinate his things. Now in this class, we are going to explore how the body controls its movements and coordinates its actions with other parts of the body and the environment. Let us see now. Movements in organisms. What is mean by movement? What exactly the movement is? The ability of organism to move certain body parts is called movement. Say for example, I lift my hand, I lift my leg, now I am talking, all these are what? Movement. The, what is movement? What is the definition of movement? It is the ability of organism to move certain body parts. What is mean by locomotion? When they move from one place to another, when an organism moves from one location to another location, then it is called locomotion. So. There is a difference between movement and locomotion. Next, introduction to control and coordination. What is mean by control and coordination? Organisms move in response to various kinds of stimuli like light, heat, nutrients, food, meat, etc. All the activities and animals are controlled and coordinated by only two. One is nervous system, another one is endocrine system. Hormones are, what are hormones? These are chemical substances which are which acts as a chemical messengers which assist the nervous system in carrying out various functions. So overall your body parts are controlled by one is nervous system or brain another one is hormones. Hormones are produced by endocrine glands. So they are secreted by endocrine glands. Hormones in plants coordinates the movements. Now let us see what is nervous system. What exactly the nervous system is? It consists of brain and spinal cord. The structural and functional unit of nervous system is neuron. So what is neuron? It is, a, it is also called brain cell. Neuron is the structural and functional unit of nervous system. Each neuron has three main parts. That is, those are dendrites, cyton or soma or cell body, both are same, and axon. Let us see what are dendrites. Can you see the picture? The hair-like structures which are orange in color. Yeah, these are dendrites. What is its main function? It receives impulses from other neurons or from external environment. What is cyton or soma? It processes the impulse. It just like a cytoplasm. Its main function is processing the impulse after receiving from the dendrites. What is the function of axon? Axon transmit the impulse either to another neuron or to muscular gland. Axon is an extended part of one of the dendrite. One of the dendrite hair like structure is extended into an axon. Axon may be myelinated or non-myelinated. A fatty substance which covers the axon is called myelin sheath. Few axons are myelinated, few are non-myelinated. Here it is myelinated. You can see the blue color thing which covers the axon that is myelin sheath. It's a fatty substance. The impulse transmission is faster in myelinated neurons. The impulses are very fastly transferred in myelinated neurons. Structure is very very important. Practice well. Dendrites, nucleus, cell body, axon, each and every axon. Can you see the nucleus here? Yes. The axon ending is nothing but axon terminals which conducts information from one neuron to another neuron by producing few chemical substances called synapse. So, what is synapse? Important question. It's a gap between one nerve ending of neuron to the dendrites of another neuron or second neuron. The gap between the nerve endings of one neuron and the dendrites of another neuron called synapse through which chemical coordination or chemical transfer from, from one neuron to another neuron or impulses transfer from one neuron to another neuron. Nerve ending or axon terminals both are same. A nervous system is classified into three major parts. One is CNS, PNS and ANS. What is CNS? Central nervous system, peripheral nervous system and autonomous nervous system. Let us see what comes under CNS, central nervous system. Brain and spinal cord. 
what are the parts which comes under central nervous system brain and spinal cord peripheral nervous system cranial nerves and spinal nerves autonomous nervous system sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system now let us study about cns central nervous system the parts which comes under cns are brain and spinal cord again brain is classified into three parts or three areas that is forebrain midbrain and hindbrain cranial nerves arise from the brain spinal nerves arise from the spinal cord so let us study in detail now human brain it is enclosed in cranium you know as we know each and every body part each and every organ is covered by muscle as well as skeleton so skeleton or bones function is to give posture for, uh, and support to our body so here the brain is also covered by a bony case called cranium or brain box it is enclosed within a brain box and it is protected by cerebrospinal fluid the fluid which surrounds the brain is nothing but cerebrospinal fluid which acts as a shock absorber important question what is mean by cerebrospinal fluid the fluid which surrounds the brain what is its function it acts as a shock absorber thereby it prevents the brain from mechanical damage as well as from chemical damage cranium supports brain from mechanical damage or it helps in managing uh, damage of what brain and uh, cerebrospinal fluid acts as shock absorber next human brain has three major parts that is forebrain midbrain and hindbrain very very important question you must know what are the functions of forebrain midbrain and hindbrain repeatedly asked question forebrain the parts which comes under forebrain are cerebrum it covers 80% of the brain cerebrum maximum brain the maximum part of brain is cerebrum it covers up to 80% so most complex or specialized part of the brain is cerebrum or the forebrain let us see the functions thinking part of the brain whatever you do you think before you do it right so the thinking part is controlled by where you do thinking where exactly your brain controls this thinking yes cerebrum it is forebrain it also controls the voluntary actions what is my voluntary actions the actions which are under your control say for example watching tv thinking walking writing reading all these are voluntary actions so voluntary actions are controlled by cerebrum it stores information memory if you have more memory power then which part of your brain actually controls it yes cerebrum if you have less memory power then also it's cerebrum your cerebrum is less our cerebrum quantity our convolutions are uh, what you say twists convolutions are very less if the convolutions are less you may have less memory power if convolutions are more in cerebrum then the memory memory power is our intelligence is more center associated with hunger which part of the brain controls and coordinates hunger yes it's cerebrum it receives sensory impulses from various body parts and integrates its sensory functions like your nose eyes uh, skin your tongue everything is connected to cerebrum that's why the sensory functions are connected to cerebrum it controls the sensory actions five senses touch say uh, uh, touch uh, vision smell and uh, taste all these are controlled by what and even sound controlled by cerebrum yes next forebrain is over next midbrain it connects the forebrain with the hindbrain what is the main function of midbrain it connects the forebrain with hindbrain it is the portion of the central nervous system associated with vision hearing motor control sleep or awake arousal alert, uh, alertness and uh, 24 hours regulation so what is the function of uh, midbrain it controls and coordinates or it connects the forebrain with hindbrain it's a position of central nervous it's a portion of central nervous system associated with it also helps in vision hearing and motor control sleep and awake cycle 24 hour cycle like uh, clearing of bowel movements that is discharging of fecal matter urination alertness everything is under the control of midbrain now let us study about hindbrain the parts which comes under hindbrain are cerebellum keep it in mind it's not cerebrum cerebellum cerebellum medulla oblongata and pons viridae the short forms of medulla oblongata are medulla pons viridae you can say directly pons what are the functions of cerebellum 
it maintains posture and balance of the body it controls body movements a drunken person cannot walk properly cannot run a vehicle cannot ride any bike or cycle or anything why why usually a government says not to drink and drive why because a drunken person alcohol directly acts on cerebellum that's why a drunken person cannot ride anything because he loses his body balance it may uh, because cerebellum maintains body balance as well as posture and body movements too next medulla oblongata its function is it controls the involuntary movements or actions what are involuntary actions the actions which are not under the control of our will say for example blood pressure you cannot control it digestion you cannot control it respiration you cannot control it all these involuntary actions are controlled by medulla oblongata pons viruli involuntary action again regulation of respiration these are the two functions of pons viruli next brain what exactly the brain is the human brain is a command center for the human nervous system it receives input from the sensory organs and sends output to the muscles the human brain has the same basic structure as the hum other uh, mammal brains but is larger in relation to the body size than other brains as is well the lobal brain along with more convolutions in cerebrum next brain is protected by as i told you already it is protected by a fluid called cerebrospinal fluid which acts as a shock absorber it uh, and it has a several layers called meninges three layers called meninges which covers the brain spinal cord is enclosed in uh, enclosed by vertebral column the extension of brain is nothing but spinal cord it is covered by vertebral column or your backbone this is the structure of brain can you see forebrain midbrain and hindbrain forebrain the part which comes under forebrain are cerebrum midbrain this is the portion of midbrain hypothalamus pituitary gland pons medulla oblongata cerebellum brain stem all these are the parts of what hindbrain yes see where is cerebrum corpus callosum it is a connection between uh, forebrain and uh, Uh, yeah hemispheres left and right hemisphere hemisphere in the sense half of the portion of a brain we have two hemispheres left and right it is connected by the yellow color can you, can you see the structure this is corpus callosum next central nervous system the central nervous system i taught you this already again it's a recap central nervous system is made up of brain and spinal cord the functions of different parts of the brain are cerebrum is responsible for reasoning logic emotion speech this is extra information you can write it learn it properly important question memory visual processing recognition of auditory and taste stimuli etc cerebellum it also regulates and coordinates body movements postures body and balance pons relays signals from hindbrain to forebrain medulla oblongata controls all involuntary actions like vomiting seizing yawning heartbeat breathing blood pressure etc medulla oblongata continues the spinal cord Uh, the elongated or extended part of medulla oblongata or brain is nothing but spinal cord which runs through the vertebral column that is backbone and it controls what is its function reflex action i will tell you what is meant by reflex action one clue if you touch a hot plate you take your hand or finger back that is reflex action can you try a few more reflex actions yeah if you put your leg on thorn immediately you take it out if you see a dog you will run I repeat again the nervous system is divided into three parts cns pns and ans central nervous system autonomous nervous system and peripheral nervous system i have finished i have explained already the cns now let us discuss about pns peripheral nervous system the parts which comes under peripheral nervous systems are only nerves what is mean by nerve a group of axons or a group of neurons is nothing but what nerve so the nerves given out by the brain and spinal cord forms the peripheral nervous system so there are 12 cranial nerves and 31 spinal nerves what is meant by cranial nerves the nerves which arise from the cranium is nothing but cranial nerves how many are there 12 pairs and how many spinal nerves spinal cord the nerves which arise from spinal cord is nothing but spinal nerves and the number are 31 pairs so these two types of nerves comes under peripheral nervous system which brings or which control and coordinates the body functions next autonomous nervous system all the nerves of pns that control the involuntary actions in the body form the autonomous nervous system the two divisions of autonomous nervous system are sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system what exactly the autonomous nervous system do i'll give you an example it always do opposite function 
how uh, if I see a book by uh, like Muir, your pupil will dilate, that is sympathetic. If I see the far object, your pupil will constrict. So this is parasympathetic, so opposite work. So let us study now. The sympathetic nervous system prepares the body for intense physical activity and is often referred to as fight or flight response. Uh, if you see a snake, few persons what they do, either they fight it, fight with it or they will fly or come out of it, that situation. So one is sympathetic, another one is parasympathetic. The parasympathetic nervous system has almost the exact opposite effect and relaxes the body and inhibits or slows many high emergency functions. So now reflex action, what is meant by reflex action? Already I have discussed it with you. If, it, if I touch a hot plate, if you touch a hot plate, immediately take out your hand. Why? Your neurons are not only present in your brain, your neurons are present throughout your body. It receives, first dendrite receives the signals and send it towards the brain cells or spinal cord to get what response. Let us study about it. Very, very important question, repeatedly asked question. Reflex action. What is meant by reflex action? Is it voluntary, involuntary action? It is not under your control. So it is involuntary action. It is a sudden involuntary reaction of a body in response to stimuli. Just imagine a hot plate, a heat is a stimulus and you take out your hand. So that is response. So response to stimulus is nothing but what? Reflex action. What is mean by reflex arc? It is the path followed by electrical impulse during a reflex action. Can you see the path or a way? How impulses as well as the message carry towards, to and forth. So this path is nothing but reflex arc. Say for example, I will give you an example. Receptor, see the thumb in a picture? Yeah, receptor, your thumb, if you touch a hot plate to your thumb. So your receptor cells are present in your thumb that I am showing in the picture. And after that, sensory neuron carries the impulses. Sensory neuron always carry impulses, that is heat towards what? Spinal cord, towards the spinal cord. See, sensory neuron carrying its uh, impulses towards the spinal cord. There a synapse, it's a gap between a uh, nerve ending of one neuron and the dendrites of another neuron. See the picture exactly. There, another neuron receives the signals, that ho uh, hot signal. And again, it sends it towards the motor neuron. Motor neuron, now information carried towards the synapse carries information from receptor to spinal cord. Now spinal cord gave you the information what to do. What you have to do? Take out your hand. That information is carried away by what? Motor neuron. Motor neuron carries information from the spinal cord towards your thumb or hand. What to do? So this motor neuron, it gives our, uh, it gives signal or message to your muscle, affect our muscle as what? To pull, to pull your hand or finger. So these are effectors. So this path is nothing but reflex arc and the action is nothing but reflex action. So the impulse travels from the receptor organ to the spinal cord or brain is processed there and the information is brought back to the concerned muscle to carry out the action. Thus the receptor organ or sensory affector neuron, interneuron. Interneuron or associate neuron is nothing but a middle neuron which is present between the sensory and motor neuron. And effect, efferent or motor neuron and effector organ are the components of reflex arc. Sensory or receptor which receives the signal. Sensory neuron or the receptor cells first receives the signal. Receptor cells first receives the signal and sends it towards the sensory neuron. Sensory neuron gives its inf information towards the spinal cord. There it processes the information and it will get the information. That information is carried away by the motor neuron towards the effector cells or effector uh, place or muscle. So that effector neuron or effector cells tells your hand or thumb to take out from that situation of heart rate. This I taught you already, the protection of CNS. The brain is protected by three main layers. One is the bony skull cranium and the sp cerebrospinal fluid and the meninges. There are three meninges, dura mater, arachnoid and pia mater. It is not there in syllabus, no need to read. Just learn the bony skull cerebrospinal fluid and the meninges.